what's going on guys welcome back to the channel welcome back and i have to say first of all let me well not necessarily i'm not apologizing i'm just letting you guys know um i didn't expect this week to be this busy and this is practically the only thing that i got to do <laughs> this week but i'm gonna try to squeeze out i'm gonna try to squeeze out a lot more reactions for the weekend coming up um because I usually um, like I make my schedule at the beginning of the week and then when I realize the amount of stuff that I have to do and what I have to schedule um, as I said YouTube has to remain at the back burner for now they have to remain and I'll bring it to the front burner when it becomes a substantial part of my business life like when it becomes that then I can say okay I can push YouTube to the front and make it an explicit priority for me so um for now it just has to be on the back burner when it comes on to things that i do um i do want the channel to grow and as i said there is i'm not in a rush but if the channel does grow it's not like i'm not going to appreciate it but at this time i'm trying to make the best of what i can do when i have the chance to do these reactions because i wish i could sit down and watch stuff all day man i really do but this you know if this is how if this was like maybe like five maybe six years ago i started this and you know the channel would have been in a place now you know what i'm saying where i could be like yo let's do reactions all day because i enjoy doing it that's the thing i enjoy doing it when i'm not doing it i feel like i'm letting you guys down so it's kind of like you know what i mean i know you guys are enjoying the content and stuff like that we may not be like other channels i've seen um, there's anime that I've reacted to um, already, you know what I mean? And people who just started, maybe a month ago, started watching the anime, they're getting like tens of thousands of views on YouTube. And it's just, it's weird to me, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I'm barely cracking a thousand views on those very videos, you know, and I'm doing full reaction. So I don't know what it is. I think it has to do with the fact that I don't put my reactions on YouTube. I think that's one of the bigger things that you people don't really like to leave YouTube to go and watch these reactions. Um, but they are people that do because you guys are here and I really do appreciate it. So for this reaction that I'm about to do, my hero, we're going to jump in because we know what happened last time and Bakugo got, um, Bakugo got kidnapped by the the villain by the um the villain the you know the organized villains the most organized villains ever <laughs> you know what i mean you know what i'm saying like they have agents you know um and it's just crazy i mean you know um somebody had wrote in the comment section saying that it kind of should be expected due to the fact that this is a because of how the society is you know it's not so far-fetched to think that they would be that structured and you know it makes sense you know it does make sense but bakugo got captured kidnapped by the um by the villains who attacked them during their little um you know their little um camping um not necessarily camping it was like training camp or whatever that they went to kind of improve their perks perks quirks <laughs> right they went to improve their their quirks and you know Midoriya had one of the biggest moments um during this kind of mini art kind of you know during this you know attack kind of have one of the biggest the biggest moments i mean he is the the um the protagonist of the story so he's gonna get those moments other people had moments too but we kind of had to see him kind of showing that little kid like listen man i know your parents died but we do this for a reason you get what i'm saying so celebrating your parents as heroes is not such a bad thing they died in the light of duty kind of like the military you know um where the soldiers go out to war you know they go out to war and then they have to come back you know what i'm saying or they don't come back you know so they have to be celebrated as you know heroes like we may not be be 
uh, in agreement with the war, but it is what it is. But anyways, man, we're going to jump into these um, reactions, man. Today, I'm going to try to do um, four episodes, maybe even five. So let's see how it goes. I know I promised that I was going to go to 49. So I might end up doing an extra one. I don't know yet, but we'll see. How I feel after that fourth episode, if it's a good place to stop or it's hype enough, I'll jump into episode 50. Okay, so we'll see how that goes. But anyways, man, that was, it was a great little arc. Now let's go see what is going to be the aftermath of this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're already kind of feeling the brunt of it because the media is kind of killing them and saying that, man, they let a student get kidnapped and all of this other stuff. So it's kind of like... Let's see how it goes. You know what I'm saying? I'm interested to see, you know, because I might, you know, they're getting information on the dude that has, um, um, what is it, all for one, right? So they've had some new information and kind of located him. They located the bar that the villains are working out of by the, the, the guy that's in the, the, um, the, the police the, the friend that All Might has in the um in the police force. So let's go see what's happening, man. And I'll see you guys right back here for the review. Okay, so I just finished watching one of the best episodes of anime I've seen in a very long time. I can't say it's the best ever. I can't say that the hype was unreal. Um, I'm a person who loves action. I, I would say this episode is up there with um, Dragon Ball Super Goku. Um, Goku going ultra ultra instinct and taking out. Um, I think I think the first time Goku. Um, when, when, oh, who did he go up against? I, I can't even remember because it's been so long. I'm trying to remember if it was when he took out, I think it's when he took out Khalifa. I think he used Ultra Instinct to, to take out Khalifa, right? Uh, Cal, Calif, Cal, I can't even remember what their name is when they merged. It's been so long. It's just to show you. That when Dragon Ball goes away, you don't remember shit because the story sucks. But <laughs> but it was on that hype level when he when he uh when he got her in the face with the Kamehameha, um the Ultra Instinct Kamehameha. That one was pretty dope. That episode was pretty hype. You get what I'm saying because of the way out it was done. You know what I mean. So the hype level of it. Like, I'm pretty sure that that's, in my opinion, it was the best episode of the entire um, season of Dragon Ball um, Super. In my humble opinion, I think that was the best episode during the, in, during the, the whole um, tournament arc they did um, for Dragon Ball Super, right? Um, so I think... In my opinion, the hype level was there for this episode. And also, some information was dropped. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some some information was dropped. It turns out that um, Shigaraki is related to, to, um, to All Might's um, predecessor. You know what I'm saying? Um, his, his, his master was um, Shigaraki's grandma. So I'm wondering if it's a manipulation thing on All For One's part. He got arrested. He was defeated. So he got arrested. How the hell you keep somebody like that in jail? Anyways, you know what I'm saying? What are these jails made of to keep all these superpowers in check? That's something that they probably need to explain in some sort of lore. Maybe they'll release some data books about that because, um, I mean, this guy can acquire quirks but i think he passed it on you get what i'm saying that's why he was saving all of those villains uh, along with um along with shigaraki but it, but shigaraki is not really his real name his actual name is actually shimura which is his last name right 
um I, what is it tendo i think is tendo is his first name i don't remember he called his he said his full name um in episode 48 i think um so definitely looking forward to see what that's going to develop in deku going against somebody who knows what um all for one is and also knows about one for all and i believe he knows about one for all there's no way there is no way because if 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 all for one knows about one for all why would he not tell um shigaraki about it or tendo whatever his name is why would he not tell him about it like you know what i'm saying like even if he, he let's say he didn't tell him about it he's gonna know eventually he's gonna figure it out eventually i mean i'm pretty sure that it was his idea he used the same move that the nomu uses i'm guessing he's the one that passed on that quirk to the nomus to nullify all my strength because he uses against him that that um that nullification thing he used it against him the fight was just insane it was on another level all Might couldn't really go all out. He just end up kind of being in defense and throwing some small punches to kind of, you know what I'm saying, not hurt anybody around. Because you see, when All For One was going, when he was going all out, you know what I'm saying, he was basically destroying parts of the city. So, but, but, um, All Might was still tanking that stuff. So that's why, that's the reason why, another thing why I respect All Might so much, because in this situation where it seems like he used all of his power to defeat him, he gave him all the states and was like, yo, I'm going, it's all or nothing right now. You're not escaping, you're done. But I don't think that's the end of it. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I think this dude has passed on his quirk, just like how All Might, all Might um, and them can pass on one for all i think he can do the same you get what i'm saying i really do believe that he was grooming this dude and the reason why he chose this specific guy shigaraki right even though we know his name is shimura now right he even though i think he chose him for specifically um this task to use him to not only defeat all might but also to be his successor in a certain kind of way you know what i'm saying and to also play on the emotions of these people who are trying to defeat him you know what i mean because the emotional aspect is very is very easy all might overcame that but how is deku don't doesn't have that kind of um connection now but we'll see we'll see if he does get this kind of connection to this whole thing and knowing you know and all my telling him that hey the dude that we're up against right now shigaraki is you know the previous owner of of um of one for all's grandson you know what i'm saying so I don't know how Deku is going to approach this now because I'm guessing this dude is going to grow to be the ultimate villain just like All For One is. So whenever this takes place or whenever this happens, we don't know. Of course, the, st the story is still ongoing. There's a manga that's way ahead of the, of the anime. So who the hell knows? I don't know because I'm not reading the manga. Maybe when I catch up, I might take the manga on, but I also want to do there's another manga that I that I am going to start very soon that's continuing a story that that was left off in the anime that I was doing that I'm going to be doing um so I'm definitely looking forward and I'm glad that all might you know what I'm saying dropping the double entendre in the in the camera because he no easy he has to be careful now everybody knows that you deflate that that ain't you no more so is there going to be is he still going to be the number one hero or is Endeavor going to step up into that spot? I also got to talk about Endeavor to showing up and, and was like, yo, what is this pitiful back you're showing me right now? You know what I'm saying? Because obviously in that small moment, we get to see Endeavor, Endeavor's relationship, the real relationship, okay, between him and All Might 
which is, dude, I've always looked up to you. I'm always trying to catch you. You get what I'm saying? But as time goes by, you keep getting further and further away from me. And it seems like I'll never catch you. So what is this? Now that I'm looking at you figuratively and, you know, imaginatively, you know what I'm saying? Like, imaginatively, right? Now that I'm seeing you, bro, what is this pitiful back I'm looking at? Like, what is this? You know what I'm saying? You better get with the program because this is not the all might that I know. You know what I'm saying? So that was a very powerful moment. I actually got goosebumps when he said that because I'm like, you know, in that moment, I do believe that the relationship that they have, they had that we don't have any history of, right? We, we, we don't know what their history is. They haven't showed, they haven't shown us what the history between them is. We just know that they had, they, they're competing because it's number one, it's number two, right? And I really do believe that the relationship is very similar to what Bakugo and Deku is going to have in the show. Whereas sometimes I believe that eventually these two are going to be one and two in society as heroes as soon as they graduate from UA. I really do believe that that they're going to end up being one and two or maybe even the debate of all time. Who is the greatest hero of all time? You get what I'm saying? Um, I think Bakugo is going to learn a lot and it's going to be debated who's the better hero, him or Deku. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, As I said, I never doubted for a second. Bakugo is, even though he's rash, you can't listen to what he's saying because his actions is what really tell you what it is about him. And that's what you got to pay attention to. You can't pay attention to what he says or how he goes off the handle and all this other stuff. All that stuff, in my opinion and in my eyes, is for show. That's how I see Bakugo. Everything else, everything he's saying, the way how he acts is all for show. His true feelings about how things are. You'll see when he was when him and Deku went up against All Might. That's the true Bakugo coming out and letting you know. Listen, you know what I'm saying. He has a different philosophy on how he approaches things than Deku does, and Deku has a lot to learn from him just as much as Bakugo has a lot to learn from Deku. Go. From Deku, go. from Deku, right? <laughs> so, um, so I'm looking forward to see how their relationship develop going into the future like i i pay attention to, to bakugo's actions because that's what told me that a person like him will never go over to being a bad guy or a villain right because he's striving for the same thing he's just not going about it the same way as deku you get what i'm saying like deku is your classic good guy He's your classic good guy. He's going to do whatever it takes, making the right decisions, whatever he needs to do to get to that point. Bakugo, he's going to make some mistakes along the way. He's going to do some things that are irrational that you might not think. Um, the, um, I think eventually he's going to learn to work with other people. That's one of the issues that he has, that he has to change, which is which is so different from how Deku is. Deku will utilize everything and everyone around him. Bakugo would rather fight 10 dudes by himself. He's going to learn re really quickly that that shit don't fly, <laughs> okay? So we'll see how things turn out between them in the future. Hopefully, I know they're going to have a very good relationship. I know that for a fact because it's the way how, to end, how it's being written. I don't see them becoming enemies or anything this ain't you, you know naruto versus sasuke kind of thing i think they might have rival matches maybe you know what i'm saying you know during their time in school but i don't think that they might meet up for sparring matches you know what i'm saying like after you know after they graduate but i, I see them becoming very good friends <laughs> in Bakugo's way of, you know what I'm saying, of how he is with Kirishima and stuff like that. Because he still talks shit to Kirishima, but they're best friends. It's like me and my best friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, we still talk shit about each other, but if you mess with any one of us, we gonna come get you. You know what I mean? So that's how it is, man. And 
I love the show. I'm not I'm not even gonna front to you guys. I really do love the show. I love the direction that it's going. They have the hype moments, man. Great, good, wholesome moments where make you tear up, gets you hype, gets you in that moment. So I love it. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much. That's all I have to say. And I'll catch you guys next time. Just remember to subscribe if you're new. Leave a like on this video. And also, you know what to do. Leave a comment in the comment section. I'll catch you guys later.